Let's study the future perfect progressive tense. Hopefully you've already seen my video on the future perfect tense. Let's see how this tense is a little bit different. We're going to study the grammar and pronunciation of this tense. I have several situations for you that use this tense. So first, you'll hear the situation and be introduced to the tense. Then I'll explain each situation in tense, and then I'll let you practice pronouncing part of the sentence. We'd better prepare dinner for Charlie. He'll be hungry when he arrives because he'll have been driving for six hours. Now we could say, he'll be hungry when he arrives because he'll have driven for six hours. That's true, he will have finished driving. But here I'm going to use the ing so that we can really focus on the driving and how that makes him hungry. Imagine you're driving and you're looking at that highway for six hours and you're thinking about food, thinking about that hamburger. So we're going to focus on the process of driving up until he gets to our house. For this tense, we need to have will, have, been, ing verb. Will have been driving. We can contract it and say he'll have been driving. He'll have been driving because he'll have been driving. If I want to, I can take out the H in he and link the end of because to that word and it'll sound like because he'll, zeal, because he'll have been driving, because he'll have been driving, because he'll have been driving. We'd better prepare dinner for Charlie. He'll be hungry when he arrives because he'll have been driving for six hours. You need to practice saying this sentence over and over to really internalize it. So check out my blog and my audio recording that I've included in the description to this video. You can practice as much as you want until the pronunciation becomes muscle memory. Let's look at another example of the future perfect progressive tense. I'm working at the water station at the halfway point. By the time runners get to my station, they'll have been running for more than an hour, so they'll be very thirsty. This example uses the future perfect progressive tense. One event is in progress immediately up to a second event. The first event is running, and the second event is reaching my station. They run until they reach my station. We focus on the duration of the first event, in this case, running. They'll have been running for more than an hour. They'll start running and then they'll run and they'll sweat and they'll breathe hard for an hour. We use the ing here to focus on this process of running and it reminds us of all the sweat and effort put into that running. They will have been running for more than an hour. They'll have been running for more than an hour, so they'll be very thirsty. They'll have been running. They'll have been running. I'm working at the water station at the halfway point. By the time runners get to my station, they'll have been running for more than an hour, so they'll be very thirsty. My friend already bought me ice cream but I'm sitting in a traffic jam. By the time I get there, the ice cream will have been sitting on the table for more than 10 minutes and it'll have melted. I'll have to buy a new one. By the time we get there is in the present tense. We use the present tense in the by the time clause to talk about the future. The ice cream will have melted is in the future perfect tense. The ice cream will have finished melting. The melting process will be finished, so we just use the future perfect, not the ing. But the ice cream will have been sitting on the table for more than 10 minutes. We can think about the process of melting as it's sitting on the table, so we use the ing. 
When we use the ing to talk about a process happening up to a certain point in the future, this is called the future perfect progressive tense. We'll pronounce it like this. The ice cream will have been sitting. The ice cream will have been sitting. The ice cream will have been sitting on the table. The ice cream will have been sitting on the table. My friend already bought me ice cream, but I'm sitting in a traffic jam. By the time I get there, the ice cream will have been sitting on the table for more than 10 minutes and it'll have melted. I'll have to buy a new one. Let's look at another example of the future perfect progressive tense. After the long test, we should plan some exercise. We'll have been sitting for three hours, so our legs will be cramped. We're focusing on the process of sitting up until the end of the test. So we use the future perfect progressive again. This tense is really good for complaining. As we're sitting there, our legs are aching because the blood is not circulating well. You can imagine the process of sitting there and suffering while you're taking the exam. We'll have been sitting for three hours. We'll have been sitting. We'll have been sitting. We'll have been sitting. After the long test, we should plan some exercise. We'll have been sitting for three hours, so our legs will be cramped. Here's another long example that uses both the future perfect and the future perfect progressive tense. He's going trick-or-treating for three hours. By the time he gets home, he'll have collected enough candy to last for six months. He'll probably be very hyper because he'll have been eating candy for those three hours. We'll have to throw away half the candy. We can use the present progressive tense to talk about the future. He's going trick-or-treating. That means he's going trick-or-treating in the future. We could say, he will go trick-or-treating for three hours. But instead, I can say, he's going trick-or-treating. By the time he gets home, he'll have collected enough candy. By the time he gets home in the future. But remember, we use the present tense in the by the time clause to talk about the future. He'll have collected enough candy is future perfect. We're not interested in the collecting part. We're interested in the finished result. He will have a lot of candy in the end. So we use the future perfect here. He'll have collected. He'll have collected. He'll have collected. He'll probably be hyper. It's just simple future tense. But he'll have been eating candy is the future perfect progressive. Now we get to focus on all the time he is eating candy while he's walking between houses. We pronounce it because he'll have been. Because he'll have been eating candy. 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 He's going trick-or-treating for three hours. By the time he gets home, he'll have collected enough candy to last for six months. He'll probably be very hyper because he'll have been eating candy for those three hours. We'll have to throw away half the candy. This next example has a really interesting mix of verb tenses. We can't go skiing until the ski resort's made enough snow. By this time next week, the resort will have had enough time to make ample snow. The snow blowers will need maintenance though. They'll have been running them all week. Can't go skiing until the ski resort has made enough snow. Wow, here I'm using the present perfect tense to talk about the future. And we can do that after the word until. Until the resort has made. You need has plus the past participle made. By this time next week, the resort will have had enough time to make ample snow. 
Here we use the future perfect. We're not interested in the process of making snow. Again, we're just interested in the end result, that the snow will be made. Snow blowers will need maintenance though. This is the simple future tense. The snow blowers will need maintenance once in the future. They'll have been running them all week. This part uses the future perfect progressive. What's important is the process of running those machines. Those machines are going to be used and used all week, so they'll be worn out. Because we're using them so much, they'll need maintenance. So that overuse of the machinery lets us use the ing verb to emphasize that. They'll have been running them. They'll have been running them all week. They'll have been running them all week. They'll have been running them all week. We can't go skiing until the ski resort's made enough snow. By this time next week, the resort will have had enough time to make ample snow. The snow blowers will need maintenance though. They'll have been running them all week. Here's my final example for you today. It also mixes the future perfect with the future perfect progressive tense. If you start a college savings account for your baby now, he'll be so rich by the time he goes to college. The money will have been sitting in the account for 18 years. It'll have accumulated so much interest. He'll be so rich by the time he goes to college. He'll be so rich is just the simple future tense. We're simply making a prediction about him that he will be rich at one particular point in the future. Money will have been sitting in his account for 18 years. We use the future perfect progressive here because we want to focus on how long the money is sitting in that account earning interest. The money will have been sitting. The money will have been sitting. It'll have been sitting in his account. It'll have been sitting in his account. It'll have accumulated so much interest. Here we use the future perfect, not the ing, because now we're not interested in how long it's sitting there. We're only interested in the end result, how much interest was accumulated in the end. It'll have accumulated. It'll have accumulated so much interest. It'll have accumulated so much interest. It'll have accumulated so much interest. If you start a college savings account for your baby now, he'll be so rich by the time he goes to college. The money will have been sitting in the account for 18 years. It'll have accumulated so much interest. Practice what you just learned by imitating and repeating the sentences with the repetition audio recording provided. I hope this lesson made you more comfortable with how and when to use the future perfect progressive tense.